science learners and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Miss Martins and in today's video we're going to be going over the term one topics for physical sciences for this year. If you're new to my channel and you have not subscribed yet don't forget to subscribe because all of the topics that I go over that I briefly go over in this video and let you know that they will be coming up in term one I'll be doing videos on those. I'll be doing past paper exam videos. I'll be doing study tip videos. I also always link useful documents in the description below. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. And the document that I'm showing in this video, I have created for you guys for free. You can access the document on my website, missmartins.co.za. Again, I will link that in the bio below. So let's go, let's jump right into the video. It's important to note that the order of the topics that I mention in this video and that I include in my documents are in line with the grade 12 annual teaching plans. And that's basically a document that is published by the Department of Basic Education. I have linked this document in the description of the video if you want to check that out for yourself. Because the ATPs are just a guideline that the department gives schools, your school might decide to teach the topics in a different order. So just remember that, keep that in mind, double check the order of topics with your teacher. And as I mentioned, you can download the free document that I will be showing in this video. It's for free, you can download it from my website, uh, missmartins.co.za. I list all the topics. I basically made it like a checklist, so you can print it, you can stick it in your book, and you can tick off the topics as you study them in class, or when you go over them and study, um, you can see, did I study that subtopic? Do I know the subtopic? And what makes this document special, because it's obviously for grade 12s, is that at the end, it includes information about your prelim exams and your final exam. Right, so let's get into the video. We're going to be starting with the term one topics. And over here, you can see that we have momentum and impulse. I mentioned over here that it is a physics topic, not chemistry. So it's in paper one. Vertical projectile motion, again, a physics topic. So paper one and organic chemistry, which is obviously a chemistry topic, paper two. So our first topic is called momentum and impulse. And as I mentioned, that is a physics topic. So it'll be included in paper one. Now over here, I've listed the subtopics that you can expect. So these are things that you need to be able to do. Subtopics that will be covered. And I've included formula, formulae or things to know in this column over here. So first of all, you need to be able to define and calculate momentum, change in momentum and vector diagrams. There's also a little bit of Newton's second law in terms of momentum. Then we've got the impulse momentum theorem. You need to understand isolated systems. You need to state and apply the conservation of linear momentum and distinguish between elastic and inelastic collisions. Now remember that when you see what you currently see on the screen in this document, this obviously looks very overwhelming because you have no idea what this is. This is new work, so this will be covered in class with you. Remember, this checklist is there to help you so that when you go over it in class, you can see, okay, we did that, we did that, or you can print it, stick it in your book, so when you study, you can use it as a checklist and check off all the subtopics, just to make sure you've covered all your bases. So it's just to give you a little bit, bit of an idea of what to expect in the chapter. But how can you prepare for this chapter as a grade 12 learner. To prepare for momentum and impulse, you can go over equations of motion from grade 10 and especially go over some Newton's laws, especially Newton's second laws. And what I would recommend is reading the theory and the basics of momentum. It's always a good idea to read through the topic before your teacher even introduces it in class, that when they introduce it in class, you're already familiar with the terminology and basic calculations. What I've also done in this free document that you can access is I've included a data sheet. So basically I've put all the formulae that you can expect to find on your final data sheet in your matric exams. As you can see, I've listed the formulas over here. And I said, these can be found in your data sheets. And then I've also listed some formulas over here that are not found on your data sheets. They're more like common sense formulas. They apply to principles um, that you need to be able to apply. So for example, the principle of conservation of linear momentum. That says that the initial momentum of the system is equal to the final momentum of the system. So you need to know how to expand those formulae and use it in a question. But I've included them over here to help you out. Our second topic for term one is called vertical projectile motion. 
Now, in grade 10, you did something called equations of motion and you did graphs of motion. If I quickly go down to my data sheet over here, you will remember exactly what I'm talking about when you see your formulae. Those things over there are our equations of motion. Now, what we did in grade 10 is we did horizontal motion. So what I mean by that is you can remember we did, for example, a car traveling along a road or maybe two cars traveling along a road. And then one hits the brakes and they ask you to calculate the stopping distance or the time it took from car A to reach car B or something like that. We did horizontal motion in grade 10. Now we're going to be focusing on vertical up and down motion. There are a few new concepts that you absolutely have to know and study and it needs to make sense in order to apply the formulae in terms of vertical motion things like acceleration if i drop an object acceleration so the acceleration acting on that object is gravitational acceleration and on earth it is always going to be 9.8 meters per second per second m dot s to the power of negative 2 9.8 meters per second per second downwards no matter if the object is going up or if the object is coming down, gravitational acceleration is always acting down. Think about it, gravity always pulls you down. So things like that and a whole lot of other concepts you need to understand in order to do vertical projectile motion. So you can see over here, things that you need to know, for example, are things like what do we mean by projectile or projectile motion? You need to be able to use equations of motion to calculate position, velocity, displacement, time, acceleration, all those things. You need to be able to sketch graphs, displacement or position versus time rather, velocity versus time, acceleration versus time. And you need to be able to do that for an object falling straight down. So if, for example, if I drop an object off a building, if I throw an object upwards and then it comes down, if an object bounces, you need to be able to draw graphs for all of those situations. You also need to be able to use graphs to be able to calculate things such as displacement or velocity and so on. You also need to be able to look at a graph and be able to describe the motion of an object. So this is a cool section because it is very similar to what you did in grade 10, but it has a few more concepts and important things that you need to understand. And it's about vertical motion. So with that being said, how can you prepare for this topic? To prepare for vertical projectile motion, I would recommend going over the topic equations of motion and graphs of motion from grade 10. This is very, very, very important. Practice old graphs of motion questions, practice old equations of motion questions. Because remember, in grade 10, you did horizontal motion, which means you did motion along this plane, along the X. Vertical projectile motion is basically the same thing, but along the vertical plane, so up and down. So in grade 10, we learned how to do equations of motion and how to draw graphs of motion for motion along the horizontal. So it makes absolute sense to go over this again, because when we do vertical projectile motion, it's almost the same. There's a few important new concepts that you will learn, but you will apply these equations of motion in the vertical plane. And as I mentioned in my free document, I have included a data sheet, which includes all of the equations of motion for vertical projectile motion. Right, let's move on to topic number three. And this is quite a biggie and it is called organic chemistry. And then obviously it's called organic chemistry. So it's in your chemistry paper. So paper two. Now I absolutely adore organic chemistry. If you study for it and if you focus in class, it can actually be, especially the first part of it can be quite fun, easy topic. You can score nice marks in the exams, but it is a topic where you have to study. You have to learn a few rules. You have to learn a few different groups of organic compounds, but it is really, really cool. And I hope you guys stick around for the videos that I will be posting on this topic. So organic chemistry, what type of things do you need to know? You need to be able to define organic molecules, functional groups, hydrocarbons. Obviously all of these words do not make sense to you at the moment, but they will as your teacher explains it to you. And as you watch my videos, um, you also need to be able to write formulae, so molecular structural formulae, and these are all the groups that you need to know. So you can see them over here above me. We've got alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, alcohols, haloalkanes, 
esters. So esters are the nice smelling things, the things that make perfume smell good, the things that make sweeties have a nice flavor. Those are esters. Um, ketones, all these cool things. So you're gonna have, you're gonna learn how to name them. You're gonna learn how to draw them. It's very, very fun. Then you also need to understand how physical properties. Um, how the different structures of these different compounds influence the physical properties. And there's also a whole lot of things on reactions. So basically, how do we make an ester combustion of alkanes? So that's when alkanes react with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. You get addition, substitution, and elimination reactions. You know, all of this does sound overwhelming, but I promise you, as your teacher introduces these concepts, as I cover them on YouTube, you'll see that it's actually really cool. It's really, really nice interesting topic but how can you prepare for this topic to prepare for organic chemistry i would recommend going over intermolecular forces and physical properties from your grade 11 chemistry so those are things like how can the structure of the compound affect physical properties like boiling points melting points or vapor pressure so I don't know if you can recall, but in grade 11, for example, we said that if a compound has a larger molecular mass, then the, it'll have a higher boiling point. And the reason for this is because if it has a larger molecular mass, it essentially has a larger surface area. Therefore, there are more intermolecular forces acting. So the intermolecular forces are stronger. So it will require more energy to overcome those intermolecular forces, making the boiling point higher. So going over those things will really help you with the second part of organic chemistry. And in organic chemistry, you also need to know how to name compounds. So I think reading over how to name organic compounds or just reading over the different homologous series or the different types of organic compounds before your teacher gets to it in class will be super helpful. We also have some prelim or trial and final exam information in the document which is available down link below on my website and basically you need to know that you write two papers. Paper one is always physics, three hours, 150 marks. Paper two, chemistry, same thing three hours, 150 marks, and the document breaks down what you can expect in each paper and the mark allocations for each subtopic. I really hope that this video helped you and I can't wait to see you guys in future videos. Good luck with your matric year.